Tour Victoria and Centre for Sport and Culture in Australia. The home of the Australian Formula One Grand Prix, Albert Park, also plays host to the best still timber sports athletes in Australia for the Still Timber Sports Australian Championship. At this year's championships, the best 16 timber sports athletes will be divided into two pools of eight. At the end of the day, the top four in each pool will make it through to the final day. And as the new top eight will battle for the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship title. Out of the competing 16, two athletes have gone on to win championship crowns. In 2015, Braden Meyer came out on top. He beat a quality field to finish first from Brad DeLosa and Mitch Argent to claim the title as the youngest winner in Australian steel timber sports history. In 2016, Brad DeLosa was covered in glory after enduring a stop sore shootout for the title. Cat by reflexes, DeLosa is off to a fire. That first cook he's about to fall is a good straight cut. He's on a last leg now. He's cool, he's calm. This is a super fast time. 14.3 seconds. I need to win this one, but if not, I've come second or third. But one saw one race, one at a time, so who knows? His form is good, but is it too controlled, too slow? On the upcut now, the clock is ticking. Do we have a new champion? We're waiting on the time. The Losa is champion. Whoever wins the Australian Championship will represent Australia in the individual competition at the Steel Timber Sports World Championship. There are the losses through. The top four will then be selected to compete in the Team World Championship as the Chopperoos. The Open Chopperoos would mean everything, you know. The last two years I've cut the last block for Australia and won both times and broke the world record. I think, you know, if we can get a good team over there, I think, you know, we'll go a long way to win it again for sure. So, to get this year going, let's meet our top 16 athletes. In Pool A, rookie champion Blake Marsh, Tasmanian Cody Steers, Queenslanders Brody Dingle and Jamie Head. New South Welshman Brad DeLosa, Victorians Jared Williams and Blake Meyer, and Queenslander Mitch Arden. In Pool B, New South Welshman Dale Ryan and Justin Beckett and Tasmanians Dale Beams and Matt Gurr. The Victorian Quartet, Lawrence O'Toole, Glenn Gillam, Braden Meyer and David Coffey. As the athletes prepare for the first event, let's check out the Springboard. The Springboard imitates an old lumberjack technique to overcome hard root wood. The athletes cut two pockets in a vertical log 2.7 metres high. With the help of the springboard, they climb to the top and cut through a 27 centimetre diameter log from both sides. Our first heat sees Queenslander Jamie Head take on reigning steel timber sports champion Brad DeLosa. Yeah, my goal out of the championships is definitely to try and get that number one position and go and be the individual representative for Australia over in Norway. But, uh, Hopefully I can make the top four guys as well and uh, get a run in the team. For Brad DeLosa, he just wants to get stuck into the action. Yeah, I'm not feeling too bad, you know, at the minute pretty relaxed. Really looking forward to getting out there and getting into it, so it's been a long time coming and uh, it'll be great just to, to get out of the blocks and see how it all goes. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! And they are off and chopping in this first heat of the Australian Championships qualification round. Head gets his first board and jams it in the pocket slightly ahead of DeLosa at this stage. But time will tell as they head further up the tree. DeLosa on his second pocket now, making sure that he has a good angle. No sag as he jumps up and looks to attack the top block. They're pretty much neck and neck as they take on the front side of the block. They'll need to do most of the damage on the front side so they can easily chop through the back side with minimal blows. Head is ripping through and he'll soon flip over to the back side. We want to keep it in and around 50 seconds to be in the points today. Delosa turns first. So too does Head as they look to finish off. And Head, 48.9. Great time to start with. Delosa, 52.03. 
In heat two is returning still timber sports athlete Brody Dingle from Queensland. With a break last year, I had some time to go away and reflect on some technique issues and definitely springboard. I haven't been able to cut good pockets so far, so if I can do that, just cut good safe pockets and get up there and chop on a good safe board, I'd be really happy with that. He'll be taking on fellow Queenslander Mitch Argent. Three, two, one, go! Both left-handers make a start. The time to beat by Jamie Head of 48.9 is what they're aiming for. Argent slots in his first board as he starts on the second pocket. Dingle is on his second pocket too, and we've got to make sure he's putting that springboard practice to good use here in this heat. Second board is loaded as he jumps up. Argent steadily chops the block despite his board sagging. This will mean he needs to stand closer to the tree and won't get that power he's after. Dingle though has a really badly sagging board. He's going to come back down and reset, which will cost him big time as Argent powers on. Dingle tries to deepen his pocket. Argent is now on the backside. He's looking to drive off his log. He hasn't slowed down and he's done it in one with a time of 50.8 seconds. Dingle still setting his second board. He'll be trying to at least get a time on the board and keep himself in the race. Now on the top board, but it's just not his moment. In Pool B, our first heat features a serious contender for the title in Lawrence O'Toole. You know, that's probably the hardest thing for the weekend is to get through that first day of qualifying because that's where all the pressure is. Because once you're in the final on the Sunday, then you can just do what you got to do. O'Toole will be up against springboard legend Matt Gurr from Tasmania. This is going to be a good matchup. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. O'Toole is keen to get the pocket down to the board in early, but Matt Gurr is absolutely flying up the tree. He's working to get that second pocket done, board loaded and onto the top block. This is going to be quick and Gurr has scaled the tree in record time. He's already chopping at the top block as O'Toole climbs and in reality he's not that far behind. It will really depend on who has the best cut and block on the top. Gurr is smashing away at the top block but O'Toole is putting in his legendary long strokes the power to disintegrate the block. It's now neck and neck as they attack the block with most of the work done on the front side. Matt Gurr turns now and he's working on the back. O'Toole turns two, it'll be a race for the finish. But it looks like O'Toole should take it from behind here. It's O'Toole, he takes it in 48.95. What a fantastic effort to claim the win from behind. Yeah, I had a good four hit hole on the bottom. I think I put five in my top hole and I cut the front of the log really well. I could definitely go a lot better than that, but um, you know, I climbed pretty good, so I uh, can't complain about that. Next up, we have Tasmanian Dale Beams taking on 2015 Australian champion, Braden Meyer. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. They get to the wood at the same time, setting up their pockets for the first board. Meyer gets his board loaded up nice and quickly with beams right on him. They will both be looking for a fast climb up the tree in this heat as they cut their second pocket. Beams looks to have taken an ever so slight lead as he loads his second board and is already up to the top. Maya taking a long time to get that second board sorted, but they both have a really nice angle on the board as Beams begins to attack the top block at almost three metres above the ground. Beams has three hits on Maya, but you can never underestimate it. He's now begun to gain momentum as he rips at the block, looking to get a great start in these early rounds. Both Beams and Maya are swinging well at the front and they'll soon turn to the back. Meyer appears to have taken the lead now and he puts in the final drivers. And it's Meyer, he comes from behind to take the win at 53.82. Beams is finishing off and comes home in 60.52. Meyer really came out firing, but it looks like there's something that's bothering him about his cut. The judges are inspecting his log and it's never a good sign when this occurs at the end of a heat. Uh, Braden uh, slabbed a portion of timber off his block. It's called uncut timber, so it's a, it's a disqualification. Um, when they gave me the DQ, I wasn't real happy. With Maya disqualified, what will be the repercussions for the former champion? Yeah, I was pretty angry. We are 
Melbourne for the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship and former Australian champion Braden Meyer has just been disqualified in the first event. Um, when they gave me the DQ, I wasn't real happy because I knew the rules. The range climbed up, gone bang. We disqualified Braden. He then went through the process of appealing that decision. Has he done everything within the rules to prevent that slapping? Yes. Yes. Has he intentionally done it? No. So we've got to make a decision on what we've got here. We considered that Braden had done all in his powers to prevent a slab, so we've uh, allowed him back in with not a disqualification in his time stands. So I'm off. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, I was pretty angry, but they've overturned it and now I'm, I'm happy again, so hopefully I'll have a good day. In Gourlay, Jamie Head top the table with Argent and Delosa in second and third. With Myers to disqualification overturned, it will keep things interesting in Pool B. He finished third with O'Toole taking honours and Gurr in the most second. Let's see how they all fare in the next event, the Stock Saw. The Steel Stock Saw is the first of our soaring events. Placing both hands on the trunk of the 40 centimetre block, athletes must reach for their chainsaws on the sound of the gun and cut two perfect cookies within the allocated 10 centimetres of wood or face the threat of DQ. Pool lane leader Mitch Argent is up first for the stock saw. The stock saw, yeah, it's one of my weakest ones, so just go out there and just try not to DQ, just do everything right and hopefully come up with a good time. Argent will be up against Tasmanian Cody Steers in this heat. Can he keep his winning run alive? Argent and Steers are revving the still MS661 chainsaw, available at any still store to get them all and ready to go when they start the heat. They are now in the starter's hands. They need two good cuts in and around the 12 to 13 second mark to claim maximum points today. Steers hits the bottom and starts his uppercut. So too Argent. It's close but could be Argent's day. And it is in 13.14. For Australian rookie champion Blake Marsh, the stock saw put a damper on his campaign at the Rookie World Championships in Hamburg. It's amazing how much these saws bounce all over the place with those powerful motors. Good start by both these guys. Looks like good cookies on both sides for that first cut. Now it's going to come close, but it looks like it's going to be Blake Marsh. Oh no, excuse me. Scott Folks gets that one. Now at the Australian champs, can Marsh improve on his efforts? He'll be up against Jared Williams in the second stock saw hit. Oh, that's good. Oh. Both together. They're chasing Argent's time to beat at 13-1-4. in a super quick 12.47, wow. Williams home in 13.2. With a fast transition, Mark Howard home at halfway point. Uh, that felt pretty good to finally get a good sock side cut. I've been practicing a lot on that, so it's finally paid off. Yeah, feeling pretty good about the next rounds. A couple of rounds, chopping rounds coming up, so they're the stronger ones. For Jamie Head in the next heat, his strategy is well defined. My mindset for the Australian Champs this year is pretty well just to get through the first day and make sure I make that top eight and then uh, I'm going to go all or nothing this year. I'm not really here to worry about making the team. It's that individual spot that I want. Head will be up against reigning champion Brad Delosa who will be looking to bounce back from the defeat that Head dealt in their last matchup with the Springboard. Who will come out on top? Let's find out. And it's a ball start for Head. Wow, that is really going to cost him. I don't know what happened there. The Losa has the advantage leading into the transition and will surely win this heat after Head's false start. And he's done in 13.47. Head waves to the judge. It appears he may not have heard the starting gun for the heat start. That will surely be disappointing for Head's campaign today. If we watch here, there you go, clear false start. DQ this morning, I just didn't hear Steve in the start, so um, my fault, I've got to have my gear right. It would have been an easy day, it's made me work a bit harder, so um, you know, that's just the way it goes, and hopefully it'll lesson learned if I make the final tomorrow. It will be our first pairing is Glenn Gillum up against David Cobb. Hitting the wood at the 
same time, Gilman Coffee is straight into their downcut. They'll be aiming for a sub 13 second time as they hit the bottom and transition into the next cookie. And Gillam has cut out on his second cookie. He hasn't noticed yet. This could spell a disqualification for him. Coffee finishes in 13.14 as Gillam continues to cut. He'll need to cut another cookie within the allocated piece of wood and within the time limit to avoid a disqualification and get some points on the board. The judges will now inspect the cookies to make sure they are all complete. This is a tense time for Gillam. A DQ would not give him the campaign he is after and set him back. Now checking the first. It looks pretty thin from here. Is it complete? No, it looks like he cut out on his first cookie too, which means disqualification for Glenn Gillam in the stock store. Our next team is the home top two with Bull B, Lawrence O'Toole and Matt Gurr. Who will get the upper hand in the stock saw? Oh, it's been to win in the stock saw, and I draw those who like to push it here to beat Gurr in one of his strongest events. Gurr is in front. He's charging on the second cookie, but O'Toole is making up distance. And he wins from behind with a fast time of 12.98. Gurr not far behind on 13.39. Wow, look at that. Uh, yeah, it was a good time, so I was happy with that run. I mean, the stock saw was sort of up and down for me, so uh, I'd probably rather bank that time for tomorrow if I need it, but, you know, it's always good to get a good run. After getting through the springboard, Braden Meyer will be looking to make his mark on the stock saw against Justin Beckett. Let's see how they go. Both with a quick start. Beckett, no slouch with the stock saw, will be gunning for O'Toole's time of 12.98. Leaving the bottom and beginning the upcut, Meyer is slightly ahead. Can he hold off Beckett to the finish? Wow, they both finish at the same time. This one is too close to call for me. As we head to the slow-mo replay, you can see the saws about to break the wood. There it is, Meyer gets the victory with a time of 13.17. I was pretty happy with that cut, just made sure I heard the gun go and hands on the wood nice and easy and before the stocks I was sitting third overall, so hopefully I've got a quick time there to bump me up a bit higher. In Pool A, Blake Marsh topped the table with Arjun close behind. In Pool B, Lawrence O'Toole won from Meyer and Beckett. Overall, Arjun leads Pool A with Delosa, Marsh and Williams in equal second, while O'Toole tops Pool B with Meyer in hot pursuit. With the competition hotting up, who will make an impact in the standing block? The Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship weekend has featured the best rookies in Australia. Daniel Gerr blitzed the field and was named the rookie champion. Yeah, I had a consistent performance all day and, and happy to come away with the win. It was also the first time the women have competed at the championship. Amanda Beans showed her strength and beat a quality field to win the title. First ever women's championship trophy. Together, the women's and rookies championships set the scene for the Australian championships as they enter their third event, the standing block. The standing block is the second axe event of the day where athletes slay at least 50% of the front side before traversing and turning to remove the back half, finalising their hit patterns with ripping overhand drives. For Brad Delosa, the standing block is where he really needs to stamp his authority on the competition. Last year was probably my weakness, so I didn't chop as well as I would have liked to, so hopefully this year I can um, improve on that a little bit. So uh, today's the day, so I've got to just make it happen. Brad Deloso will be up against a less experienced competitor in Jared Williams, who will make Deloso really earn a win. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! And they get to the wood pretty much at the same time. Fast back speed with Williams, but big, powerful strokes by Deloso, who turns first ahead of Williams. He will be aiming to set a good benchmark time in this heat. Williams also doing a lot of work to stay in contention, but Deloso should have it. And Delosa home in 17.9. Williams claims a 20.79. Just look at that power from Delosa ripping that block apart. 
Yeah, and no, it all firm pretty well. He's really nice wood and the axe worked really well in that block. So a couple of great cutters coming up, you know, after this with uh, Mitch and Jimmy and Cody. So um, hopefully the time we stand will be pretty competitive. Next up, a battle of the Queenslanders with Brody Dingle taking on Jamie Head. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! Both Head and Dingle will be taking aim at the loss of 17.9 in this heat. Dingle is ripping at that block with the determination of a man who wants a top four position. Both turn together and get to the block at the same time again. It will depend on who has done the most on the front side as Head drives off in 16.5. Thanks for playing. Head happy with that time. Just look at the power on that final blow. That was a pretty good cut for me. Uh, it was very nice wood. I sort of was a little bit nervous going into that because I was a little bit behind, but um, I knew I had to sort of pull something out and, uh, you know, I was lucky to get a good front and the back just come off nicely. Our next heat for Pool B sees Cody Steers taking on standing block specialist Mitch Argent. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! Argent to the wood first. His power and precision have earned him a shot for his place in the standing block anchor position the past two world championships. But Steers is not one to lay down. Argent has a slight lead, but Steers isn't going down without a fight. A bit of a stick, and wow, 16.89. Steers home in 17.3. Argent missed head's time, but still it was fast. Yeah, it was a bit disappointing actually. I know it was a PB, but um, hung there the last two hits and I had to come back and just rush it and trying to get him off too quick. But um, if it helped me form and just hit him off properly, I probably could have cut that two or three seconds quicker, yeah. For still, Timber Sports newcomer Glenn Gillum is putting his plan into action. And you just look at each one and take them each time, event after event, and focus and just keep poised. Gillum will be up against veteran woodchopper Dale Ryan in the next heat at Standing Block. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! A big wind up for Gillen, who was very close to the start there. Big chunks falling from his block. Dale Ryan will be looking to keep up with Gillen as he turns first, but Gillen is reeling him in, gaining momentum with each hit. He's really laying into it now. Who's going to take it out when the drivers go in? Gillen with a win and a respectable time of 17.92, which should earn him some valuable competition points. Our next heat in the standing block for Pool B sees two Tasmanians in Matt Gurr taking on Dale B. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! And it's Gurr that gets to the wood first. Beams is right on Gurr as he's putting some good work in on the front side. Beams is slaying that block with raw power as they turn at the same time and will be chasing down Gillum 17.92. Gurr really putting in the power after good results in the last two events. But bang! Beams with 17.73. On paper, the next heat is set up to be one of the best as Lawrence O'Toole takes on fellow Victorian powerhouse, Braden Mile. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! Meyer gets to the wood first, but it's O'Toole who's putting in the long, powerful strokes as the two left-handers are chasing down Dale Beam's 17.73 time. Meyer is the first to turn with O'Toole in hot pursuit. It will really be a race for the finish. And O'Toole brings it home with the win and a new Australian record in 14.93. It's always good to get a record, but uh, I'm more happy to get the win than anything. In Pool A, Head took the win from Arjun and Steers, while in Pool B, O'Toole claims a new Australian record. Overall, Argent leads to Loser and Head, while O'Toole solidifies his spot at the top of Pool B. At the halfway point, Argent and O'Toole are the clear leaders. Will anyone challenge them for the top spots? We are at the halfway point of the Steel Timber Sports Australia Championships and Mitch Argent and Lawrence O'Toole are heading up their respective pools. Can they hold their leads after the next event? The single buck. With its peg and raker system, the athlete pushes and pulls their single buck saw through a 46 centimetre pine log. Their wedger oils the saw and drives a wedge between the cookie and trunk to help avoid friction hang-ups. 
Our first heat sees current Pool A leader Mitch Argent up against Jared Williams, who's making his mark on this competition. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! They start soaring, they both at different angles on their swords as they enter the wood. Good start by Argent, who's been spending a lot of time on the single buck, but here is Williams working through the middle section as the wedge goes in. Argent looks ahead, but keep an eye on the clock. It's going to be close. Wow, a dead heat. As we check out the replay, you can see Argent's block is centered just ahead of Williams, and he takes the win with 19.47. Our next heat has Cody Steers, who needs a good result, up against Jamie Head. Time is ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. And it's Steers who has the highest stroke rate off the start, but Head is a very good single bucker. Steers is really going for it. Can he get the result he's after? Head isn't giving up as they take it to the finish. They're going to smash the time so far and get around the 15 second mark. And wow, Cody Steers takes it. 15.46. Our next team features returning Timber Sports athlete Brody Dingle up against reigning champion Brad Delosa. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Good start by Dingle and also Delosa. Both long, straight, keeping that saw running. Time to beat is 15.46 for Brody Steers. Can they do it midway through and they are nearing the finish? This is where it really hurts with Delosa is pushing through. Few more strokes and Delosa is through in 16.89, just outside Steers' time. This could be the start of Delosa's run home. Yeah, I just had a little bit of a slip on the handle, you know, caused a bit of a jag, so I pulled a little chip in. So I'm still up there in the top couple, you know, so that's where I've got to be for, to qualify for tomorrow. So underhand coming up and then finish with the hot sauce. Our next heat features Glenn Gillum, who needs a good result against Matt Gerd. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. And they're off and soaring. The Tasmanian and Gerd will really need to do his best against the rampaging Glenn Gillum, who is gunning for the full eight points in this discipline. Big, powerful strokes by Glenn Gillum and Matt Gerr with nice even strokes as well. But Gillum seems to have the answer in this seat and gets through with 16.3. Gerr home in 21.15. Finally, Glenn Gillum breaks through in a single bump. Uh, just a little bit of a hang up at the end. Uh, so it's just cost me that little bit of time, but at the end of the day, we'll see how it goes. In the next heat, both Lawrence O'Toole and Dale Beams will be chasing Glenn Gillum's time. Can they beat it? Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. The boys are off to a good start. O'Toole will be wanting to stay ahead of Beams in these early stages with big, long strokes as the red goes in and blazes through the middle section. Beams has a jag, that won't do him any favours in this matchup. The cookie breaks, but he needs to get that last bit of the cookie, and that will be disappointing for O'Toole. With 18.95, he could have had an excellent time. Beams finishes off in 26.27. Our final heat stars Justin Beckett and Braden Meyer who will be chasing Glenn Gillum's time of 16.30. Let's see how they go. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Nice long strokes from Beckett and Meyer. Good power through the saw, but Meyer has a hang up, which will cost him. Beckett seems to have a slight lead as the wedge goes in. Meyer with a bit of work to do and Beckett still with the lead. And the cookie pops off. He'll need to finish off that last bit to get his time. Meyer finishes off in 20.38. Beckett with a disappointing end to his single buck. In Pool A, Steers had the victory over Arjun and Delosa, while in Pool B, Gillum blitzed the field and finished on top. On the overall, Arjun still leads Head and Delosa in Pool A, while O'Toole is the clear leader in Pool B. As the competition qualifying day gets to the pointy end, who will make the cut? With two events to go, 16 athletes will be cut down to eight at the end of today's qualification day. In each pool, only the top four will go through to finals day. So there'll be plenty of action in the next event, the upper hand shop. 
The underhand chop resembles the old school technique of cutting felled trees down to size. After removing approximately 50% of the front side, they pirouette to the back, devastating their block with power and precision, eventually driving the wood in two. For Jared Williams, cracking the top four will definitely be a highlight. And I'm only here to sort of try my best, so if I can make the top eight, I'll be happy with that. But I'm feeling confident. I um, think I've put in a lot of effort and I've got the, the skill to do it now, so I am pretty confident. Williams will be up against current third place Brad Deloso, who will not give him an easy run in this underhand heat. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! And Williams gets to the wood first, but Delosa's powerful strokes slay the block. Williams definitely has the fast track speed and is giving Delosa a real run for his money. He seems to have the advantage over Delosa, who turns to the home run, chasing Williams. Delosa has a bit to make up on Williams, who is chopping away with Gusto. And he's done and won in 19.11. Delosa in 19.97 is given a lesson by the youngster, Williams. What a win for the young Jared Williams. Hey, yeah, pretty happy to knock off Brad. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever got one over him, so I'm pretty happy. Our next heat features two Queenslanders in Brody Dingle and Jamie Head. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. They both get to the wood at the same time as Dingle really gives it his all on the front side. It's hard to tell right now who's in the lead, but it is Head that's first turn on the back side. Slight stick with the axe, but he's recovered and Dingle is looking to reel it in. Head still looks to have the advantage and he's done, setting the time to beat with 18.45. Head definitely put his hard work to the test in this victory. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, really nice wood to cut out there. Um, you know, I was pretty happy. Been doing a fair bit of training on my underhands. When I started this prep, they weren't going so well, so I had to work extra hard and really happy that it paid off. This next heat should dial up the action with Pool A leader Mitch Argent taking on heavy hitting Cody Steers. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. And they hit the wood at exactly the same time. It's Argent laying heavy blows into the poplar as Steers really gets that power going. Argent turns first. He's set for a great time here. Steers with a little bit of work to do, but he continues to destroy the block. Time to beat is 18.45. And there it is, 17.42 for the informed Argent. Steers bashes away, but he won't be happy with that finish at 24.05. Argent turned first and ran away with the win. Yeah, that no, was a good cut. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, Australian record's always good to beat a record, but um, yes, yeah, so I come out with a good cut there. It's, it's a pretty good feeling. The next heat stars two heavy hitters in Glenn Gillum up against Justin Beckett. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Beckett just gets the advantage to the wood, but it's Gillum chopping like a man possessed. He'll need a good time here to solidify a spot in the top four as he turns to the backside. He gets straight into it and looks to have the advantage over Beckett at this stage. Gillum's act speed is phenomenal and Beckett has a bit to do to catch him. Glenn Gillum comes home in 19.47, which should get him through. The next heat has Dale Beams going up against David Coffey. Both athletes are looking for that top result. Will it be in the underhand? Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. They get to the wood together. Coffey with that tall frame leverages big, powerful hits at the block. Beams is the first to turn to the backside. Coffey follows. Who's going to come out on top? Coffey looks to be making up lost time. He puts the drivers in. And he's through. Coffee beats Gillen's time with 18.83. With those powerful strokes, Coffee came from behind to steal the victory. Been struggling with a bit of an injury. It's flared up again earlier in the day. Um, to come out then and cut the fastest time of the day so far is pretty good. I'm happy with that. With the fastest time just recorded, Lawrence O'Toole and Braden Meyer will be giving it everything to beat it. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! A clean start by both athletes. O'Toole gets the power into the block, sending wood flying. Myers Axe speed earned him an unbeatable title in the underhand last season. They're both onto the backside now and a neck and neck. It looks like they're going to get close to Goffey's time as they put the final drivers in. And there it is. Meyer claims the victory and the fastest time in the underhand today.
with that lightning fast axe speed, Meyer blitzed the field in the other hand. It wasn't my best cut, but I haven't had a real good day today. A couple of prudent knots there, so hopefully I can pull something out tomorrow. Argent kept his roll going with the fastest time in pool A. Head and Williams followed. Meyer took the eight points with the fastest time in pool B, leaving Coffey and Gillum second and third. In the battle for the top four cutoffs, Spears and Williams will need to make the next round count in pool A. But in pool B, any of the bottom five can still make it through to the final with a good hot saw run. It all comes down to the hot saw as it's make or break for the athletes on the bubble. In the final event of the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship qualifier, the top four in each pool will go through to the finals. So with one event to go, let's get into the hot seat. Athletes must cut three complete cookies in just 15 centimetres of the 46 centimetre diameter block. Jump the gun, cut over the line or incomplete cookie will result in a DQ and end any chances of being crowned the champion. After an average day, Brody Dingle and Cody Steers have their last chance to launch an attack on the fourth spot in Pool A. But Dingle is already in trouble. Trouble free 8.25, which should fare well overall. Dingle, though, has yet to make a cut and is having issues with the pull cord. Let's see how he goes. A DQ for Dingle as he cuts over the line. Next up, Jared Williams takes on Brad DeLosa. Williams needs to beat Steer's time of 8.25 to guarantee his spot in tomorrow's final. Wow, DeLosa with a 7.19, that was fast. Williams, 9.56, but will it be enough? A trouble-free run gives the loss of the win. Pretty safe run early, you know. Probably could have been a little bit quicker, but uh, yeah, I didn't want to take the risk of going for a you know, really quick time and running a DQ and uh, missing out on playing tomorrow. So, yeah, I wanted to make sure I got through. The final hot saw heat for Pool A will have Jamie Head up against current Pool A leader, Mitch Argent. That's it. Wow, Head's hot saw bogs in the wood. He'll have to start it again and attempt the third cookie cut. Argent continues his glory run with an easy victory overhead in a time of 9.93. Head finishes, but not with the time he wanted. An easy run for Argent, ending the day on a good note. The hot saw went uh, pretty good. A uh, little hiccup there at the start, but all I had to do was cut three wheels and I was um, into tomorrow's big dance. It's not the day they wanted, but can Beckett and Gurr resurrect their day in the hot saw? Hands on the wood. Get set. Wow, that was close, but Gurr gets the win in 7.23. In Heat 3 of Pool B, Dale Ryan will take on Glenn Gillum, who's been looking to make it through to the finals. Get set. A safe cut for Gillum gives him three good cookies, which should see him through to the finals. Dale Ryan, on the other hand, is struggling to get his hot sauce started. He had the same issue that cost him last year. Let's see if it works. He's run out of time and is disqualified again. Maybe it's time for a new hot sauce, Dale. Last heat of the hot sauce sees Braden Meyer up against Lawrence O'Toole, both already in the final. They'll be going for record times here with all the pressure off. but both end up with a DQ. O'Toole went for the record but lost his chain on the upset. 
At the end of the hot saw, Brad Delosa steals first from Cody Steers in pool A, while Matt Gurr showed form to take eight points from Justin Becker. And after a day of competition, O'Toole, Meyer, Gillum and Gurr are through to the finals and will meet Argent, Delosa and Head. A stock saw off will decide the fourth position in pool A between Steers and Williams. So the pressure is really on here in Melbourne to decide if Steers or Williams will go through to the final. Hands on the wood, gets it. Cat like reflexes get the saw to wood quickly. Steers will be aiming for a flawless run in order to set an unbeatable time. He hits the bottom and is gunning for the top. This looks to be a good, clean run. And he finishes in 12.56, setting Williams the time to beat. With one stock saw run to go, can Williams earn himself a spot Hands in the finals? The Gets it. Williams is quick to the wood. Earlier in the day, he had a time of 13.20. Oh, and he has a miscut on the upcut. Can he recover to beat Steers? Unfortunately, that one mistake has cost him. This delivers Steers the win and a ticket to the finals. Pretty happy, I suppose. Uh, if you had asked me about 10 minutes ago, I would have said not real good and uh, probably ready to go home, but I'm well, pretty happy to, uh, yeah, to, to get in. Next time on Steel Timber Sports Australia, the top eight athletes contend for the Australian Championship title in the toughest competition yet. Still timber sports action.